Okay, uh, my name is Amir Suhail. Uh, I'm, I'm 26 years old. I've been playing tennis in this uh, court of IIT Guwahati. Four tennis courts are there. I've been playing tennis here for around one and a half years. And uh, I am going to talk a little bit about tennis. So I just want to tell something uh, to beginners and people who are interested to play tennis. Uh, so I am targeting this video to uh, those who people in my campus may be outside also. So before uh, talking about uh, tennis, I will talk a little bit about gravity. So gravity is the force acting downwards. Uh, so uh, we have our weight and there is a force due to gravity which is acting downwards. So uh, we are using that force, gravitational force. We are uh, working against that gravitational force and we are walking and we are running and we are doing so, so many things and generally we are doing sports also by using this gravitational force we are working with our muscles and against the gravitational force so um, in every sports and in everything whatever we are doing it is it is important to utilize the ground force this ground force that is the gravitational force acting downwards so it's important to use that uh, completely 100 percentage we cannot use 100 percentage but it's important to use that gravitational force to full effect to do actions so that is um, that is important in, in tennis especially so there is a term uh, called kinetic chain so kinetic chain is, is like um, uh, in our body if we are doing some action from where that uh, action where the muscles start moving first and how that uh, action is being completed in which direction so the kinetic chain in tennis is always ground up so first uh, i want to talk about tennis court so this is our uh, one of our tennis court it is having so many lines green color outside blue color inside and uh, so many lines and one net in between so uh, these dimensions are standard internationally uh, standardized dimensions so we have curve lines there and we have base lines here, we have alley there and we have a net of, of some particular height and uh, the game is played from one side to another to uh, or four opponents uh, playing from uh, either side and uh, there are three types of tennis courts uh, this is a hard court which is made by uh, cement and on top of cement there is an acrylic layer of uh, three layers or five layers or seven layers so this is a hard coat and we have grass coats and uh, we have clay coats so in uh, so this type of hard coats are easy to maintain that's why we had uh, this kind of hard coats here in IIT Kuhati. so um, in Europe you will see mainly in England you will see grass coats and maybe in, in France Spain and all you will see more uh, or uh, clay courts so uh, even in international tennis also many many players are more into particular type of, of courts like Nadal being uh, the champion of clay courts and, and uh, Roger Federer being the champion of, of uh, grass courts and uh, Djokovic is the champion of everywhere so uh, this is a can of tennis ball uh, so this can is having three uh, three tennis balls in this so these are uh, pressurized tennis balls so uh, I will open this can by this way it's very dangerous to uh, uh, kind of open this thing because there will be injuries with this sharp edge of this thing so be careful and uh, and I will open this these are uh, three tennis boards inside so this is Wilson US Open and uh, what I want to tell is that this uh, these tennis balls are having a fixed uh, standardized diameter and there, there is a texture and the pressure inside these balls are also constant the company will make sure that it is it comes with a constant pressure and that uh, that need to be maintained uh, for a long time uh, until the lifetime of this ball, until it is being used in the court. So, uh, this is a tennis racket. So uh, it is it is the Babylon Pure Drive uh, 20, uh, 21 model. 
So this tennis racket is, is specified by its weight, how much is the weight of this tennis racket and then how much is the diameter of this uh, racket head and then there is how much stiff is the racket, how much is the stiffness, how much it can flex and then uh, the diameter of the uh, wheel. So this is having 100 square head size and uh, 4 3 by 4 uh, is the uh, uh, grip size and then uh, the weight of the racket is 300 grams and it is having a stiffness parameter of 74 that is the parameter uh, which is calculated out of 100 yeah, I will talk a little bit about the strings also so this, uh, this strings um, there are different type of strings first of all there is multi filament, there is uh, polyester, there is natural gut and there are different type of five type of strings are there and uh, these strings will have different different characteristics the stiffness the diameter and uh, and uh, many other other material parameters something like that so um, and this uh, strings are strung by a machine or uh, with a with a particular tension so this this is a uh, Solingo's hyper g string strung at 54 pounds for this particular racket i chose uh, it to be that for this racket so tennis rackets should be uh, chose in in, a, in such a way that it will suit your game. So we need to do some customization uh, in uh, tennis racket. For beginners, we have to uh, we have to take tennis rackets of some particular uh, specification. Um, now it's about tennis. So uh, we need to talk first about the rules of tennis. So uh, you can see the blue color. Uh, rectangle, the big rectangle. That is, that is the court. Court. That is our court. So, if we are playing singles, this alley, two alleys in the two sides, those are excluded. So, singles will be played only between this uh, inside this, uh, this uh, rectangle. And doubles, there will be, uh, will be played including the alley. So, uh, when we play. The points are uh, points are like uh, similar to other games. We have to uh, if if one player is hitting from this side to other side, we have to hit inside the court. If it is singles, inside this bigger region, not the alley. And uh, and if the player is returning, have to hit it back. We have we can hit it back after it pitches one. If it is pitching two times, it is opponent's point. If it is if you are hitting, you can hit without before it is pitching also. It is called volley. So uh, so you have to hit inside the court on the other side. And if, if the opponent is making a mistake by hitting outside, you will get the point. So you, if the ball is touching the net also, if it is uh, pitching outside and on the other side, it is your point. So uh, you have to pass the net. So you have to hit the ball in such a height that it will pass the net, but it, it needs to come into the court as well. So uh, more about uh, to know more about the rules of tennis, you can explore YouTube videos and uh, we'll move on. So uh, you can play tennis in whatever way you want. You can uh, play like uh, you play other games like cricket or badminton or whatever it is. Uh, but the uh, uh, but the thing you want to achieve here is that you have to pass the net and you have to limit the ball inside the court. So and and you have to hit in such a way that your opponent should face some difficulty in returning that, or the opponent should uh, should should not be able to pass the net or should be hitting outside. So to achieve that, uh, you have to hit really hard. Uh, good uh, with good pace you have to hit another most important thing you have to achieve is to get top spin so if i take the balls we have tennis balls we have so generally in cricket cricket or some other games with with ball we won't uh, generally rotate the ball so in tennis it's about uh, it's about hitting the ball moving the ball uh, longitudinally and at the same time it's about uh, rotating the ball so we, we can rotate the ball and create spin into the ball. So there is something called top spin and there is slice, side spin, down spin and different type of spins are there. So, so ultimately you will be rotating the ball with your racket. The way you will be hitting that will make the, make the ball rotate. So uh, 
why this is important is that I can I can hit this ball really powerfully like this and just go outside outside the uh, court. But uh, but if I want to hit hit it inside very powerfully, I can hit it this way. It means I have to hit the ball in a, in such a way that it will have top spin. So we have to we have to use top spin. So uh, that is why uh, we have to follow some standard uh, guidelines while playing tennis. Like uh, one thing is that you have to use your tennis racket always in the horizontal orientation, not like this. You never use your racket. Always use the horizontal. So uh, in order to hit the ball very softly with top spin, we can uh, we need to hit it uh, in such a way that we are using the ground force completely. We are uh, using the gravitational force acting downwards. We are using that effectively. So uh, the shot should not be like just hand going. It should be always from ground up. Not only your upper body, but your your uh, legs also should be involved. So if you can observe my legs, my legs are involved. So so using your legs from ground up. That is that is important using the force. So you have to be stable, and you have to you have to you have to use the ground force in an effective way. You will you will intuitively get an idea of how to do that while you will be playing. Initially, it will be your hands, and then your upper upper body. And when you are good in, in tennis, when you become good, you will use your entire body to full effect to transfer the whole power into the ball. Now we will talk about the tennis shots. Those are the important things. So we have a tennis forehand, we have backhand, we have serve, we have volley, we have slices and we have so many uh, different type of shots in tennis but the most important shots are forehand, backhand and serve or you can say serve, forehand and backhand. So serve is the most offensive shot in, the t in tennis and the second offensive shot is, is forehand and then comes backhand and for some players like Roger Federer and all even backhand is also open before talking about uh, each of these tennis shots I want to talk a little bit about how to hold the racket so this racket uh, some people will be holding like this initially beginners some people will be holding like there will be different way you, you uh, initially when you start your game you don't have any idea how to hold the racket so so there are uh, different bevels in the in the tennis racket so if you see there are eight bevels eight bevels in the tennis racket now so you can number these eight bevels in a in a particular way so uh, for a right handed player so this this if you keep the racket in this way perpendicular uh, to the ground if you keep it this way this is the first bevel first bevel and if you uh, if you rotate clockwise uh, in this direction this is the second bevel third bevel Fourth bevel, fifth bevel, six, seven, and eight. So eight bevels are there, but mostly for even right hand, for uh, left handers, it is counted in the opposite direction. This is the first, this is second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight. So even for left handers, right handers, everyone, bevel number uh, six, seven, eight are not not important. We don't generally use that. So. Uh, in case of uh, tennis forehand, we have different type of grips. So one grip is called western grip, then there is eastern grip, then there is semi-western grip. So uh, for your forehand, you can use uh, western grip, eastern grip or semi-western grip depending on your uh, swing path. If one person is swinging flat, flat, not like that much up, if one person is swinging flat, like not that down maybe somewhere here and swinging like this that person need to keep the racket at an extreme angle so that person need to use need to use eastern grip but if someone like Roger Federer is, is, is having extremely like a very good racket drop and then swing very high in that case he can use west, uh, western grip instead of the eastern grip if you have a moderate uh, swing which starts from somewhere here and then ends somewhere here 
In that case, you can use semi western grip. So I generally use semi western grip. Uh, so for tennis backhand, we need to have uh, different type of grip. Backhand is the short where which we will play. Like I am a right hand here. This is my forehand and this is my backhand. So for backhand, there is two handed backhand which will have this kind of a thing and then we will play like this and uh, there is one handed backhand which will be like which will be having this kind of a motion so um, it is personal choice which one will work for you there are pros and cons for uh, either we'll talk about that before that uh, for uh, backhand grip you need to use your uh, this hand underneath the racket at 6th uh, six, bevel will be like this and your uh, this this hand that that is the front uh, hand that will be uh, in in between first and second bevel for two handed backhand and then it will be on the first bevel for one handed backhand one handed backhand so this difference is, is required generally there will be variation but uh, generally you can say that this hand should be somewhere in the first bevel for 200 backhand and 100 backhand for serve serve is the most important tennis shot so for serve you need to have have a grip called continental grip so the second bevel if your index finger knuckle is on, on the second bevel the racket will be like this so that that uh, this kind of uh, grip index finger knuckle on the second bevel that is called continental grip so serve an advanced tennis serve will always will have a continental grip you can even hold like this and hit but that is not going to be an advanced tennis serve so uh, second bevel for uh, so, uh, coming into details of this forehand tennis forehand so um, i am a right hander so this is my forehand side and this is how i will hit the ball so um, first thing is, is um, when we are playing tennis, if I want to hit uh, forehand with a racket, uh, racket uh, head horizontal like this, I want to be away from the ball. When if the ball is coming in this line, I want to be away. So that is how you position your body. That is the first thing you want to do. Second thing is that uh, you need to have a perfect arm motion and, and your uh, legs should be properly placed and so that you will be stable enough to hit the, hit the ball. Toes, you need to give toes to your toes, to your toes, toes, and then you need to be in your knees. That is how you will be waiting for the for the ball, having a jumping stance, and then you will wait for the ball with uh, holding the racket maybe in this way, the racket head being above the uh, hand handle of the racket, uh, so that you can use gravity to move the racket. So uh, in case of a forehand, if I need to hit a forehand. So I will be come taking the racket back. This, this take back is very important. Uh, this will help you to prepare this. This uh, take back is required on time so that you will be able to hit the ball uh, with with a complete uh, energy transfer. So after this take back, after this take back, there will be a racket drop. Racket drop will be there, and then you will be hitting the ball. So this swing should be supposed to have a follow through which is, which is supposed to end, end somewhere here on your shoulder and uh, some people even even catch catch the racket with their hand this hand but uh, that is not required also but uh, if you if you are interested you can do that but uh, with forehand what you need to have is, is, is that that you need to have the perfect uh, leg motion with uh, early preparation you need to place your body somewhere away from the ball and then uh, then you will move your legs in such a way that you will be in a forceful position racket up this is the uh, power position it is called the power position and then there will be a racket drop and then you will take the racket to the maximum ground ground and then you will be showing your wrist wrist into the opponent and then the racket will lead the wrist and then you will hit the ball like this that is how you are going to hit the tennis ball so uh, while hitting forehand, some people will hit the forehand uh, like this. So if you notice, this hand is not moving when I hit. So hitting the forehand like this only with hand is not effective. So you are not using your upper body. 
if you are effectively using your upper body to effectively use your upper body you need to have your hand hand following this hand both hands coming in this direction and then then going back so using of the non hitting arm to good effect is important and ultimately while hitting the forehand like while you take the uh, racket down and after you take the racket up take the racket up at the same time your body also lifts up that is when you you unleash the power from ground and you hit the ball so so you store this energy energy by going down and then you go up so that is how you use uh, uh, the ground force to pull full effect to hit a forehand so you cannot hit every ball uh, as a forehand some balls will come in this side also for me and if for a left hander some balls will come in this side also so uh, we need to uh, hit those balls so that's why we have backhand backhand is is for me for a right hander like me the backhand will be in this side so how i will hit the ball coming in this direction so to hit backhands uh, you can either go for two handed backhand or you can use one handed backhand so two handed backhand will be more consistent and uh, but it will be a little bit limited you cannot move your uh, both hands together uh, freely um, freely and powerfully so that is a disadvantage of two handed backhand but it will be more consistent but in case of one handed backhand you can swing swing from somewhere here to to here so it will be having a wider swing but uh, you need to do it very precisely otherwise the ball will go somewhere else than you were in this situation so uh, for uh, hitting the back end you always need to go into a cross leg position so in forehand it will be like this you will be facing to the ground like this you will hit a forehand and then if the ball is coming this way you need to take this this leg into this position and then you need to hit the back end so if it is a two handed back end it will be like you will be hitting like this ending somewhere here to follow through and if it is a one handed back end you will be hitting like this so with the correct grip if you have the correct grip for forehand or backhand you will be meeting the ball with this kind of an angle so that the ball will have top spin you will rotate the ball and with uh, with if you go through the bit of science about the top spin so the ball will rotate and that will create a pressure difference on the ball and the ball will go down and that will limit the ball into the court so that is why we need to have top spin and we need to have the rotation and we need to have the grip so everything we are doing is for a reason here so it is important to have the grip and then swing very long more than forehand and backhand the most important shot in tennis is serve so uh, the fifth, more than 50 percentage of weightage is is to serve if you can uh, take the advantage by serving well you can even win the matches win matches so that is why tennis serve is very important tennis serve is the most satisfying shot and it is the most uh, most powerful and aggressive shot in tennis so how to how we can do tennis serve in a in a proper way so that it will uh, it will advance it will improve by time so we need to start by a continental grip like i told index finger knuckle on the second bevel and then then you need to uh, have the correct uh, leg positioning you need to position in such a way that if i am if i am going to hit that is the at at side and this is the both both side so if i am going to hit there i need to position my legs in such a way that i'll be i'll be able to be stable first and then then i can drop the ball down i can have the correct grip and then then it's just just about uh, hitting the ball in a, in a particular way that ball didn't go inside i will try again before trying again i want to say that uh, that in serve if i am serving you need to uh, have the racket take back i will show the racket take back how it should be so you will be you will be starting from somewhat like this somewhat like this then you will be taking the racket back racket back and you will be tossing the ball you will toss the ball you will take the racket back like this so you need to toss the ball ball will go up 
and racket you will take that. So about tossing, you have to toss with your uh, this joint space, this way. You have to always toss into the foot, in front of your body and uh, take the racket back. Racket should be going, racket should not be going like this. Racket should not be going like this. It should be always going like this. Just parallel to the court, like this. If you have the right grip, it will come like this. It will come like this. Then the racket will do, go behind your head and it will just touch your head as well. So this, this is important. So the, the racket will start from here. It will go here and then it will, it will, you will have a, have a uh, like leaning, leaning backwards and then you will, you will, you will go forward. And you will have something called pronation. You will have a wrist, wrist turn. You can, there are different type of serves now. The slice serve is there, slash serve is there, and kick serve is there. So this, this, this is your holding. If the, the racket should come uh, at the end, racket will be coming like this. And if you are, if you are uh, meeting the ball like this, this, that's how it will be a slice serve. The ball will be sliced. And if you are able to turn your wrist to make it flat, this, that will be flat sir. And if you can turn more, like this, and, and uh, you know, hit the ball like this way, that will be kick sir. So these three serves are there. So all three serves will have a controlled amount of, of pronation. So kick sir requires most amount of pronation, and uh, slice serve doesn't require that much pronation. So this pronation is, is, is we are uh, doing pronation for a reason. So with pronation, we will get around 20-30% of extra power. So whoever is serving very... And you can control the direction of the ball as well. So to to get so many aces, you have to vary your, your uh, direction as well along with the power. And it will change the pounce and, and spin of the ball as well. So um, it is important to vary your serve in, in different, different ways. So, uh, so initially for practicing serves, what I will suggest is to have the continental grip and then keep 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 the racket head behind your head and then toss the ball and then, then hit like that. So this will this will this is just like splitting the process, just keeping it and, and hit it. So here I have just thrown it a little bit. So like this we do have the grip. So it is just like turning the wrist at the end. So I am not using my body now, even though I told about uh, using the ground force to good effect, I haven't shown that in the serve. So mm, when you are when you are uh, hitting the serve with this with grip and then tossing the ball and coming like this, you will be going down, you will be going down and then, then when you are hitting, you will be like in, you will be like in this kind of a position and then when you are hitting, you will be like jumping. So, so when you are going down and then up, that is when, when the ground force is transferred. You are going to use the ground force, that energy, through your legs, into your arm, into your body and ultimately into the ball. So that kinetic chain will give so much power into your serve. So, um, so initially when you see advanced players serving, they will jump. They will even go maybe like this much height from the, from the court and they will be stepping inside, inside the court around 1 meter that kind of uh, uh, momentum will be generated by this uh, by optimally using the ground force so now the disclaimer is that uh, my shots are improving I need, uh, I need have long way to go. So this um, service serve needs improvement, forehand, backhand, everything. So, um, but uh, thing is that we have to follow all this this guideline so that uh, we can improve our game. So uh, one thing about uh, male and female tennis players is that uh, you will see the, if you watch closely, you will see that there is small difference. So. Um, Male players will not have that much racket take back, and but female players will take the racket maybe further back, maybe up to here. And then they will, they will, they will, they will, they will So, this is the 
this is required because female players uh, need that that uh, larger swings to generate the power and they are flexible enough to go uh, take their hand up to here so that is the reason why there is this difference between male and female players so even uh, the game also is a little bit different if you observe you will understand so that's important so this this is not uh, same for male and female players we have to we have to have a longer swing if you are a female player but you can survive with a shorter swing if you are a male player probably but it's not not a uh, not an excuse you need to have you need to have a the enough bracket take that and then you need to have have the complete swing uh, before i wind up this video i'll talk little bit about uh, that bracket if you want to buy a tennis racket what are the things you need to you need to worry about so in a tennis racket i told there is a, a head size head size that is the diameter of this racket head and then um, then there is weight of the racket there is stiffness and there is uh, grip size so if you are a beginner you can go for uh, rackets weighing less than 300 grams probably say less than around 280 grams weight you can uh, unstrung weight you can use and uh, the head size if you are a beginner player you can use a larger head size so that you have more margin for error and uh, and you can use a, a softer racket this is a stiffer racket so it won't give that much good feeling for the uh, arm there will be vibrations coming from the racket into the arm so if you are a beginner you can use a softer racket and uh, the grip size is according to your hand size so you can measure your hand from your index finger knuckle to your heel pad the length and then you can choose what are the and and you can uh, you can hold accurately you can need to hold the racket like this way in your fourth hand grip and then you need to make sure that there is one finger gap that's how you measure the racket uh, and the grip size is correct for you or not so for me i am using four three by eight that is three three that is the great size for the uh, grip so so these are the things that are important uh, if you are buying good racket the strings won't be there you have to do the stringing with uh, with probably polyester is the uh, majority like 90 percentage of people are using polyester so this polyester strings are uh, little bit uh, high in stiffness but they last long they give uh, good power and uh, top spin and uh, and and there are so many advantages for polyester strings so majority of the tennis world is polyester string so you can do the use the polyester strings this is solingo hyper g and uh, you can strung it with your required tension so initially you should not so tension should be in a particular range it should be from um, 45 to say 45 to 60 pounds but if you are a beginner i will recommend you that you can go from 45 or 48 to 54 pounds uh, somewhere on, uh, around 50 pounds will be good tension uh, with a polyester string that will be good so that is how you you uh, choose a racket. You can buy uh, rackets from Tennis Hub. dot in in India. They sell uh, old rackets as well. So uh, this is an old racket I bought from them. Uh, uh, a pro racket. So I got a good racket for a for a cheaper amount because I bought from them and uh, have done this thing. buy tennis balls from good companies like Wilson, uh, Wilson, Yonex, Head, Babylot and all. So I generally use this Wilson US Open tennis balls which are extremely good for uh, hard courts like ours and uh, it, it is having consistent bounds and the pressure maintenance is also good enough. So uh, you need to choose, choose your uh, balls if you are buying on your own you can choose you have the option to choose which brand of tennis balls you are going to buy. So this is the official ball of the US Open. So uh, if you are into the tennis nerds category, if you are that much interested in tennis, you have to you can explore YouTube. There are different different YouTube channels with uh, different uh, world class tennis coaches, and there is a there is a company called Tennis Warehouse internationally. They operate in US and and uh, Europe. So uh, they have uh, tennis equipment at a cheaper price. 
So in, on an international scale, like tennis have been in India, all over the world, uh, they kind of dominate the sales of, of, of tennis equipment. So you can check out their website. They also have a website called Tennis Warehouse University, where uh, where you can see the the technical scientific properties of of the tennis equipment, like string uh, stiffness and so many other things. So so it will help you if you're too much into tennis. If you are uh, if you care about all the parameters of your racket, string, ball, court, and everything, you can uh, you can get their help as well. Uh, this is the first video I am making in YouTube with uh, me telling something so uh, I don't know whether I'm good in this but I'm just just trying and uh, mm, yeah if you want to want want to encourage me or if you want to hear con content from me you can subscribe to my channel and maybe uh, if I think that I'm I'm okay in this I will continue doing this thank you